Hi, I'm Andrew Armstrong, and welcome to the back of this teardown lab. Look at that. Isn't it so teeny tiny? And I can turn it on for you. It's still got the screen protector. But look, oh, maybe you can't quite see that. It's the pocket star. Little glow on the screen. Games, apps. We'll zoom in, don't worry. I'll show you that in a moment. And uh, this was uh, sort of literally fell onto my desk from none other than... Uh, Jared uh, Rebo, the multi-rotor guy, he purchased this as part of a Kickstarter. I say he purchased it, is it backed it, I guess is a more correct term. And it is a teeny tiny little keyring game system that I, I think it's based on some sort of, you know, the usual kind of micro type chipsets. And it's even still got the screen protector in, but we're going to get rid of that. But I think we'll have to open it up, have a look first, see what's inside it before we play the games because to be honest this thing's a little bit annoying right now and if you pull these out you're going to damage it because these are normally stuck to the actual screens which are bigger than the bezel you see so let's open it up now i can't turn it off it's still on i think because it's got basically a rechargeable battery because it's got a uh, standard chargey thing micro sd card lanyard hole button on the top for power and i think it's a menu button as well um, D-pad A and B. So it's kind of cute though. It is very cute. Just going to do these. And interestingly enough, they're slot head, which is the first thing that gets you, like a slot head. Hmm, okay. Okay. And then there's this grill on the back, which I think, you know, you think, oh, it's for a speaker, but I certainly have heard any sound out of it. So we're going to have a look. Maybe it's not connected. No idea. So those are really interesting screws and they've been mauled actually they look like they've been cut so maybe they had two they were too long or something but they're very fine thread and this is a very soft plastic it's almost like a uh, soft mold injection plastic um, and actually doesn't look like it's without its flaws but we'll examine that when you pop it back together so there's your front cover with your D-pad. Interesting construction and your buttons. These are all made like pretty much prototype build. There's your on off button on the top. We'll put that aside. Ooh, and there's the board itself with the battery. Oh, and it does come out. I think that thing's stuck to it may well be the vibration motor I don't see a speaker in there but let's uh, let's uh, have a look we're going to zoom in a little bit so we can have a look at what's in here so first things first I can see you've got Atmel AVR well, it's an Atmel AT SAM 021 an AT SAM not sure what that is. There is a little reset button on the back. There's a little teeny reset button there. There's your USB port. Just a couple of little transistors, probably to do with the power there. A little inductor going to the battery. Something to do with a charge circuit. Could be their uh, charge circuit um, controller. Let's pop that in over there. And there, there is a bit of a stripped wire there on the battery there. You can see that bit exposed. Somebody's been doing it by hand. It's fine. You'd expect so. If it's a limited run. So maybe that's it. Zep -sh 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 TM pocket star. Zep -sh -sh pocket star. Um, little tiny tack switches, the teeniest tiniest you can get. Not much on the front really. Um, just some basic little transistor. You can see that the components are actually bigger than the uh, main uh, switches. And there's your screen. I'm going to remove that <gasps> pristine screen protector thing. Right now it's unprotected. We'll have a quick look at the old buttons here because they're uh, striking me something interesting. It's almost like you've got an external button material and then they've pushed this sort of insert in and it seems the same for the little A and B button. So it's odd really. I wonder if there was an issue with the injection moulding on how you get that. But it is nicely done. Let's be fair, it is actually pretty nicely done for something that's, again, limited run. Um, looking at the plastic, if I turn this over we'll lose our buttons. You will see there are dimples and things here, so it looks like it's not quite perfect in terms of the uh, run. If you look on the edges, you can see there on the edge, just that little bit 
indented there, indented there. So the plastics look very much prototype plastics. And in fact, it's it's quite glossy, but I think it's unpainted. Now, a lot of plastic things you won't realize actually are painted plastics to give them that shiny finish. But this one seems to be unpainted. But it's something they could actually work out, probably work out those kinks if there's a, a market for these. Again, it feels very much prototype run, but to be honest, for a Kickstarter to come to fruition is pretty much a rarity, isn't it? Let's get that there. Okay, nice. Now, how do you get this back in? I think I would like this, though, if they made the whole case out of plastic and didn't have a cutout for the screen. I think that would uh, protect the screen, you know, and be quite cool having it all clear. I don't know if there's any utility in that. I think the actual lanyard, I was worried about the lanyard bit would be quite um, weak, but I think that's going to be relatively strong. So if you do have it on a key ring or something, it's probably okay. Let's see if we can get the old button in. And the buttonhole looks manually <laughs> manually adjusted. Someone's been in there with a file to get this right. So it must be a labour of love making all these bloody things. How do we get that in? So much so, it seems, that I can't even get the switch in. It will be to just adjust that round a bit. Pocket star. So if you've got if no bum, if you've got every uh, game going, you probably want one of these, wouldn't you? Miss to be a completionist in your pocket-sized um, arsenal. Yeah, actually, I can see um, knife edge marks here. So the holes have been scooped out and cl cleared by. Uh, by hand. So it means you probably could adjust this a little bit more. If you find that the D-pad isn't D-ing it enough for you, um, it did feel to me when I was using it earlier that it wasn't um, going down basically. Well, I, it, was, it was going down but it wasn't clicking. So I don't suppose it will start clicking now that we've assembled it. Let's try again. Yeah, it's not a good feel. Anyway, the map. It's not mine. Who cares? The best thing here is that it does use a micro SD card and if you go online oh that screw doesn't want to tighten okay <laughs> I would have, I'd have preferred it if that screw would tighten it's very soft plastic and this is a very fine threaded screw they're not like a self tap or anything they're slot head they're not even Phillips it's like a, a screw that you'd get in your eyeglasses In. Come on, please tighten up. But I really uh, expected it to have a speaker in it. I'm not sure why they've got that cut out. I'm sure that thing is a, a buzzer motor, not a speaker. So I wonder why they went the option to do the uh, vibration rather than the beeper. Now that screw is not tightening. But will I lose the screw? Probably probably not. You could probably 3D print yourself a case if you wanted to. I might just drop a little bit of glue in there. Now I seem to have smudged the screen up. Let's give it a wipe. I guess that's as good as it gets to the corner of a dirty t-shirt. So we'll pop the old card in. Correct way. I'll turn off the lights, get it. Even a slight chance of being able to see the screen. Power on, come on. Hooray! Brightness. So we'll go. Oop. What is. It's going mental. So it seems like there's an LED in there too. You can choose the uh, colour of uh, some sort of multi. Um, up, down, right. Okay, so it's kind of working. Why can't I get... I can't seem... There we go. Right. 85%, come on. 90, 95, 100% bright. Vibration. Oh, oh, look at that. It's... Piece of crap. <laughs> right. So we'll have a look at the games. Oh, let's go look at info. Device information, model PSV 3S1 2018. Menu version 1.4, and there's a nice little color palette. Mm. 
Status battery 80%. Failed to load SD. Nice. Hardware by Gherkin Dogen. Sorry, I can't pronounce that. Main software by Florian Keller. Special thanks to Benjamin Beck and. Uh, sorry, guys. I wouldn't do it justice trying to pronounce those. Failed to load SD card. Hmm, okay, so let's uh, insert a valid. And I know this is a valid one because we just saw it. Come on, come on. I've got every faith in you, Pocket Star. You can do it! So we have Meteors, Pocket Invaders, Brick Breaker, Pocket Triss. So we'll start with Meteors. Come on, play. I'm not entering my name. <laughs> Woohoo! If I zoom out a bit, you can see what it looks like. It's just teeny. Bum! So it looks kind of neat as a little dev thing, doesn't it? I mean, considering you've you're probably got a reasonable micro here, because it's just basically system on chip doing everything. I wonder how it compares to the ESP12 and ESP32 devices we've seen. It's certainly no Odroid Go. You're not going to get any emulators on here, apart from, I don't know. <laughs> I don't even think you wouldn't emulate anything, basically, on this. Okay, right, that's that. And then we can push the button on the top to go back to the menu. And good games. And we'll try Pocket Invaders. So these were all on the company's website. Press A. Play. Pretty standard fare. And every time the uh, invaders get zapped, it buzzes a touch. Come on now. I actually quite like this. It's probably the easier game of uh, Space Invaders. And there we go. Round and round we go. Main menu. Games, Meteors, Pocket Invaders, Brick Breaker by Florian. We saw Florian's name earlier in the old uh, menu there. So you get to choose the level. Basically an Arkanoid. It's kind of neat though, isn't it? But it's, it's just, again, shame there's no sound effects, but I guess it could be annoying just having a beeper. Pocket Invaders. Pocket Trist, come on, this must be quite a tour de force on such a little platform. Okay. Good, you've got the uh, sliding dynamic. Come on, let's, no, what? I pressed right and I'm sure it bloody went left. Come on. One Tetris, that's all I want. No, it's not going to happen, guys. Main menu. I think that was all the games, yeah. And then the apps. Score tracker. Stopwatch. Counter. Dice. I quite like dice. Let's try that one. A is throw. Woohoo! That's kind of neat, isn't it? If you've got your... Uh, a, D, and D. Again, nothing you probably couldn't get for your phone. So, yeah, I don't know. I don't know, guys. I don't know. Is this good or bad or indifferent? I mean, what's your view on this? Would you have one or would you uh, really just give this, this project a miss? I mean, it's nice as a novelty and it's kind of so teeny, 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 which is cool. But I don't know. I think it was about $35 to kickstart, it could be found, I'd have to check that, 35 euros. Um, for the same money, you get an Odroid Go. So yeah, the choice is yours. As ever, thanks for watching.